Would you concur, Michael Owen? Yeah, at the moment. I mean, what is it? Seven points and a game in hand Manchester City have got. That's a, that's a lot. We're past halfway. I mean, you'd have to say if Liverpool don't beat Manchester City at the weekend, then... I mean, I can't see... Because it's not just the points total. It's what's going to happen in the future. And, and Liverpool just aren't playing well and haven't played that well for, for the last month or so. I actually think, though, that they're, they're, they're better against better teams. You know, teams that actually come out a little bit and fancy themselves to, to play against them. At the moment, anyone that plays deep and, and puts men behind the ball, they're really struggling to unlock. Now, Brighton, give them their due. They attacked in numbers, but when they had to defend, they defended in numbers as well. I mean, Liverpool just couldn't prize open uh, the pack defence, and that's been a theme of the last few weeks. Mm. And when you look at that, as I say, the, the game in hand that City have uh, is Everton away, ironically, uh, on Merseyside. If City were to beat Liverpool on Sunday, could you see any way back for Jurgen Klopp's team? No, not if... I think they're going to have to win that game. But I think the, the bigger worry is the fact just the way that they're playing. You know, the fact that... That was a brilliant interview, by the way, from, mm. from Robertson. You know, just the fact he was, he was honest. You know, I think that's why they are... That's why they were champions. That's why they are champions. That's why they won the Champions League, because they set standards which... They try and push every game. And today, you know, he said Brian were the better team, and they were, you know. So I think you've got to hold your hands up when you, when you don't have it. They didn't have it. And I think the biggest worry for Klopp will be you can lose games, that's fine. But it's just the fact the way that they're playing. And City, on the, other, on the flip, are playing off the charts again. They're playing beautiful attacking football. They don't concede. Liverpool, with the injuries that they have, they don't really look like scoring. The tempo isn't there. The urgency isn't there. So it's tough for Klopp because I think it's just a little... It's a blip when you can't afford to have one. City had theirs, I don't see them having another one. OK, and Brighton were the ones who could have scored more than one goal in the end, but uh, Steven Alzati's first in the Premier League was the difference. It was, and I think Liverpool will be disappointed that they didn't stop the cross. That's where it stemmed from. You can see Dan Byrne at the bottom of your picture. You know, that's the left-back of Brighton getting forward. Just shows you, you know, how much they were, were willing to take chances and get numbers. Look at that, again, five bodies in the box. Uh, yeah, a little bit of luck. But I think if I was Jurgen Klopp, I'd be disappointed. 2v2 out there on the, on, the, on the wing. You can see Andy Robertson talking to Firmino, saying, right, you know, you follow the, the runner to start with, and then all of a sudden he puts his arm down, and then he points for Firmino to go and actually close the ball down. Um, and in the end, nobody does it properly. Firmino goes out there half-heartedly, lets the cross come in, and all of a sudden it's nodded back in by Burns and wriggles its way into the back of the net. Yeah, I think Byrne, you know, it's difficult. He's at that back post, he's big. You know, Trent goes in, does what he's supposed to do, get, get near Phillips there. But it, it, we highlighted that at the time, the bodies that Brighton put in the box put a lot of pressure on you. And because they're so positive and they had so many bodies in the box, Liverpool didn't really mark everyone. Obviously, you don't put any pressure on the ball, but Firmino's not used to being out there on that left-hand side, you know? He's, he's used to being at the top of the pitch. So if you're going to play off that left-hand side and play in front of a, a full-back, you have to get to the... The cross, you know, and obviously that little delay that Mo highlighted where he's pointing, that's enough for the ball to come in. And so tiny little things, but they add up over a game. And I think Brighton got those little details better than Liverpool and that's why they won the game. More frustration for Liverpool, because we're going to show you something now. Uh, Liverpool against the current bottom six, not the top six, the bottom clubs in the Premier League. And just look at that points tally, seven points from a possible 21. Beaten by Brighton tonight, beaten by Burnley in the last home game. Draws against Fulham, against West Brom, and, of course, Brighton away and Newcastle away. Another game they failed to score. I mean, that is, that is quite staggering, Owen, when you look at that. Well, points-wise, seven from 21 is staggering. The, 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 the thing that surprised me even more is the fact they don't really score many goals in any of those games. You know, it's, it's, it's you know, ones and... In the past, or last season, you know, there, there was fives and sixes at times. They were absolutely destroying teams, so... You know, as Mo said, maybe it is, you know, the teams that sit deep and, they're, they're, you know, they're, they're quite compact, they're struggling to break down. I think that the transitions are what make Liverpool so special, I think, at times. And that, that graphic there, 7 out of 21 points against the bottom six, that's not, that's not the standards they've set in the past season. Well, could you believe that when you first saw that? Oh, it's a staggering uh, graphic. I mean, five goals they've scored in seven games against the bottom. Last season, they would have scored five goals in one of those games. They would have scored 35 against those teams. <laughs> they've scored five against the, the, uh, the bottom six. That's really poor. Because, well, and it goes back to what I said. I actually fancy Liverpool against the better teams. You know, they've just beaten Tottenham and West Ham. Two teams that are very, very good and in good form. Um, and 
actually, you can't write them off against Manchester City. OK, one team is absolutely at the peak of their powers. One team is probably struggling as much as they have done in years. Yet, you still think in a big game, you know, Liverpool can pull out a performance. But that's their problem, beating packed defences, teams that come and are happy to get a draw, happy to just to sort of keep the score down. And in the end, they're, they're running away with a point or sometimes three. And Andy Robertson saying that we've got to get our form back. When, when you look at the standards they've hit over the last three to four seasons consistently, is this as bad a patch since Jurgen Klopp really took the job that you can remember? Yeah, I think so, yeah. And the performances and the results. Um, visually, you know, I, I like stats, I read stats, but sometimes you just, it just doesn't look right. And it hasn't looked right for, you know, for half a dozen games at least um, now. They're not playing well at all. Tottenham was, was a good performance. Owen mentioned the players that are missing. Of course that has a massive, cha massive bearing. Every team relies on, on certain players, um, no matter who you are. But even with the players that are going out there, they're underperforming. You know, it's, it's not like, right, the big players are here and this is as good as we are. Liverpool are better than that and it's just not quite happening. It looks like there's no energy in the team. Liverpool are used to winning the ball high, you know, closing, keeping the energy up, keeping a high tempo game. And all of a sudden now it's, it's just not the Liverpool I'm used to watching. It's very slow. It's, you know, they rarely win the ball. They never hunt in packs anymore. It's just... It's just not what we're used to at the minute, and they need to find something and find it quick. I know, and you've found something to illustrate exactly what Michael's saying with the average formation of Liverpool tonight. This is another staggering uh, picture for you. Well, look, that, I mean, it's, I mean, it's hard to... Explain well, that. Explain, in, in a way, because when you think about that Liverpool when they're at their best, you know, Robertson's high and wide on that left-hand side, almost as a winger, Trent Alexander-Arnold is the same, and Mo Salah... Uh, Mane and Firmino are almost in the width of the 18-yard box, you know, so they're almost, they're always in the box there and then maybe one of the midfielders joins in. There's no width in that side anymore. So, you know, so that at times, and when you saw in the game today, they were hitting crosses too deep. So it was too comfortable for Brighton there. And I just think for, for Klopp there, he'll probably, we saw City earlier where they went back to having that width, which allows pockets of space in the middle of the pitch there. Liverpool are at their best when you see they're, they don't have number 10s. Their 10s are their fullbacks, which is Robertson and, and Alexander Arnold. And they often get those assists from really being high and wide, almost getting to the byline. And that graphic there just shows they're really on, they're all on top of each other. So at times you need people to stretch it. You know, you, you need the width. And right now, as Mo said, it, it was all a bit too slow. And maybe that is because they're all on top of each other. Mm. Yeah. And I often think as well that, that Mane, when he plays, and, and Salah, they're better when they start wide. Think of the chance that Salah had early on. Start yeah. wide and run inside. As soon as Firmino just drops in, it leaves those gaps and they come wide. A lot of the time this season, they've been starting narrow. And then you've got nowhere to run. The only way you can run is to run out, away from the goal. So I think Liverpool are better when they have width. I think every team is better when we had width. We saw Manchester City earlier on and highlighted what the width does for them. Um, and I just think that, that Liverpool are... They're, they're, they're get clustering, you know, they've got a lot of samey players in, in the midfield, um, in Thiago, in, in Vinaldum, in Milner, you know. So, I don't know, it's, uh, I'd like to see them stretch and play a lot more, up in the tempo, winning the ball high again, committing players forward to win the ball high, and I think Liverpool can then, because you know, they've got to do it, they've got to stem it themselves, they're not got the Anfield crowd at the moment mm. to, to cheer them on to get them, you know, to get them up for it. If they lose the ball, to go and win it back. You know, you can react off that crowd. It's a powerful thing. That's why home records have been home records and, and you know, for, for years and years and years, it is an advantage to play with your crowd. But they can't call upon that now, so they've got to, you know, do it themselves, find a way to, uh, to uh, you know, to get this monkey off their back in many ways. And, but as I say, I don't fear for them at, at, against Manchester City. Against good teams, I don't fear for them. It's against packed defences. I think they're running out of ideas. OK. Pinyere.